we just do a quick proper so more formal round of introductions because you know there's so many people that don't know each other people here yes yeah good idea okay so uh i'll start i'm claire Druid. i'm from salisbury and um i'm uh, going to lead on the um elms uh projects today in this meeting okay i'm bill jarvis i'm a member of wca and a member of the land use group uh and really interested in what's going to be going on with the elms i'm, I'm julian i'm also sort of with wta i'm i'm based in swindon but i'm um, also sort of work there and um particularly interested in the elms projects and do, you know back up and website and stuff like that um yeah, I'll, um, I'll read out people around the baby site so rowena you're next okay so i'm rowena quantra from climate friendly bradford on avon and I don't know if any of you came to the talk from Neil Hume on rewilding, the chap from NEP, but we had very generous donations at that talk and we had about £130 left and Neil suggested we should buy some disease resistant elms with it. So I'm really interested <clears throat> to see what you're doing because I'm going to need to order some at some stage. So I'd like to know what your plans are. Brilliant, thanks. Jane Cooksey. Jane Cooksey, I live in Pitman near Salisbury. I've been in the area for about a year and I've just signed up to be a tree warden and I'm involved in the Elm Project. Cool. Uh, Jane Mellett? Uh, hello, I'm from Cologne and I'm with the, we have a uh, parish council climate change and biodiversity working group and um, we're looking at what work we do in our community woodland at the moment so i'm listening in to see what's happening with the elms and see whether that might be relevant amazing thanks um hazel is that hazel <laughs> yes i'm i'm hazel brazil think of two nuts and you've got my name and uh <laughs> i'm from trowbridge um but uh i'm, I'm a retired teacher but uh, very interested uh, in what's going on uh, in this area and also uh, my um uh, my, my our meeting at Friends, uh, I often bring you up of what's going on uh, in recent meetings. So um, I sort of have a, a finger here, there and everywhere. So I'm Thank always you. interested in what's going on. Thank you very much. Great to network it. Yes, OK. Um, and Adam? Yeah, I'm um, Chapman Slade, Adam Oakley. Um, I'm involved in a project where four acres of community land we're trying to get off the ground. Um, a lot of that is woodland, and we so we're very interested in the elms in that respect. But also um, involved with the parish council, and we're looking to plant more trees, and have my own patch of land as well. So very interested in the elms. Amazing. Um, uh, Julie. Hello, everyone. I'm Julie Strawson. I'm with WCA, and also uh, Leaf, the local environment action friends in the Wiley Valley, and I'm helping with communications. Um. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, I'm from Bradford and Avon. Um, I'm current chair of Brad of Work Climate Alliance for the year. I'm a transport campaigner, transport topic group lead. Uh, my interests in land use are um, green blue infrastructure corridors in combination with travel corridors, um, reforesting and woodland to sequester carbon, and the problem of um, uh, livestock methane, rumen and livestock methane as a as a greenhouse gas. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Mike Roberts. Hi, everyone. I, I'm from Castle Coombe. Um, yes, I, I was pleased to see the Elms project put forward. Um, I would like to spread the word around um, the Castle Coombe parish, but also the wider Bybrook Valley. I'm also linked into the um, the church through the uh, through the benefits here so uh, keen to lend some weight to it in this area thank you okay um leslie come oh hi um, i'm nicola lipscomb um les and i are representing the salisbury area green space partnership who um you know keen to raise awareness of the importance and value of green and blue infrastructure um in this area and um trees are obviously a critical part of of that um i remember elms <laughs> and uh, we love to see um you know uh these more um disease resistant use of more disease resistant trees or trialing of them in this area 
Um, we did have a chat with the Dean and Chapter of, well, the Dean of Salisbury Cathedral, um, because I think elms were a feature of the close, um, and it would be wonderful if perhaps um, yeah. they were able to experiment. Absolutely, absolutely, and a classic picture of uh, Salisbury Cathedral, aren't mm. they? <laughs> uh, Kate Freeman? Uh, I, I'm particularly interested in the uh, Elm project for all the reasons other people have mentioned. I live in Edgewell in the Pusey Vale, which where it was described as a weed. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Right. Um, uh, Chris Wolford? Uh, maybe not. Um, Enid Frantilla? Hello, I'm here. Um, hello, I'm from West Levington, uh, South Devizes, and um, I'm just an interested person. It sounds like a really great project, um, just to see if I can help at all. Great, thank you. Um, Margaret Green. Hello there, I'm here. Um, well, I'll just make myself visible. Go away. Don't worry, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> Make myself visible. There we go, with a bit of luck. Um, yes, uh, I'm interested in life, the universe, and everything. And uh, when I was a kid living in South London, at the bottom of my garden was an old elm tree, which was hollow. And my brother and I spent a lot of time digging out the tinder from the middle of the tree right. and we had elm trees all along this all along the side of our long garden as well so right. uh, putting elms back in the landscape would be a wonderful thing to do and if i can help i will thank you margaret great um uh, chris wolford do you want to uh, just yeah sorry I've, joined now. I've, I've, I've unraveled that soon problem um yeah i'm i was born having gloucestershire i remember elm trees and i remember their loss and I'm just really observing to see what the project's about. Thanks, Chris. And whereabouts are you? I'm in southwest Wiltshire, near Zeal's oh, okay. Towerhead yeah. sort of area. Oh, Thanks. Plenty um, of around me. <laughs> and um, the Jane, I, I... So I can see you are muted. Is that Hello. Pusey Jane? Yes. Hello, Pusey Jane. Jane. Brown. Um, I'm here with Bob Darby. <laughs> I'm not now, am I? We can hear you. That's good. We can see you. Yeah. And it does say the internet connection is a bit funny. Yeah. But yes, exactly. Yeah, I agree with what everybody said, and yeah. love. Right. We're, we're wardens at, um, on a wildlife trust reserve, so it'd be actually nice to get a couple of trees there. And Paul knows oh, a bit more. Yeah. About. Up, up in Malmesbury, plant they have already planted a, a handful of disease-resistant elms. So if you want to talk to anyone in the River Valleys, Malmesbury River Valleys Trust, I'm sure they, in fact, they have a website. Right. Um, yeah. And someone will get back to you on what they've done right. so far. That's great. Thank you very much. Yeah, we better get back to Claire. Now. But uh, Bill's just you. asked if everyone can. Put their location in brackets after their name in it, you know, rename themselves on Zoom. It could be quite helpful just so that we get to learn who's from where. <laughs> Does everybody know how to do that? No, I don't no. know how to do that. All right, if you can't, don't worry. But you know, um, if you can, it's just a good idea. I don't know how to do that. Just no, click the right, click the three dots in the right, hover over the picture, click the three dots in the top right, and use rename if if, if you're on a PC. Um, don't worry if you can't, but it's just handy. No. Otherwise, you I'm can always just type in the chat. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Right. OK, well, well, that was absolutely fantastic because I think that illustrates exactly what the project is, because like me, a lot of you have got incredible memories of elms. I spent a lot of time hanging around in an elm tree reading books and I had to help my dad pull down or cut and chop down our um, our big elm trees when I was a kid, um, completely against every health and safety regulation you can possibly think of. Um, um, and so I'm, I'm glad I'm here to let, I wasn't <laughs> demolished by an elm at an early age, because I could have been. Um, so the elm idea of the project is, um, I think somebody mentioned it, it's to link up what everybody 
is already doing uh, because all around the county, I've got my list I maintain of um, the groups I know about because I can't even keep up with the groups that were uh, exist in Wiltshire. We've got so many groups who are doing things. So the idea of the Elms project is to build on what everybody is doing locally already. So it's not to distract them from planting their green corridors or working on their river valleys or whatever it is. It's to um, include in whatever projects people are doing or want to do or possibly new projects as well, but um, to include an elm or elms or significant trees um, so that uh, the projects can um, have a significance they wouldn't otherwise have. So the idea is of moving the baseline. Lots of us have mentioned that we uh, grew up with elms and knew, know that. Uh, my sons have never probably noticed an elm or seen an elm particularly, um, but um, the next generation could um, and that's just a signifier of other things and other natural experiences that people could have if we um, build on our green corridors and nature recovery and so on. So that's the idea of the project. It's not that uh, climate change is going to be averted by the elm tree as such, but that it's going to be a, a flagship tree within tree planting schemes um, and something that people know where it is um, and um, that there is follow-up because one of the issues that's coming up a lot I think is tree planting and then nobody's looking after the trees the trees are dying and nobody's watering them so it's to give continuity and a focus for people um, so that um, more people know about the schemes that are going on and then as as Wiltshire Climate Alliance, we're not really doing anything new. I'm, I was hoping um, Mike DiPicci would um, would stay, but he came and went because um, Mike's always planting trees. I'm sure he's been planting trees already. And, and from the research I've done so far, lots of other people are already planting trees, um, uh, planting elms, I should say. Um, but it's to um, connect that um, to... Um, building the local groups and the, what Wiltshire Climate Alliance can do is help with sourcing the elms, help with identifying which elm is going to be planted because there's an issue about which type of elm um, and we'll probably get to that a bit later. Um, what people, how people want to do it, do they want a signature tree you know on the village green or do they want it in the corridors already planting but then to um, make it easy for people to do this because people are incredibly busy they're all doing lots of stuff so we can help with sourcing we can help with advice we can help with publicity and um, um, a celebration if you like of, of what's been done to to raise the profile of our groups um, so that we're, Wiltshire Climate Alliance is, is there as a helping hand if you like for, for the groups that are going forward uh, so that's the scheme in essence and it's to with the idea of moving the baseline or restoring the baseline or having a new baseline, i.e. that idea of what is normal? What is normal? Is it normal to be able to see an elm? Is it normal to be able to see bees and butterflies? Is it normal to be able to see whatever? Um, so that that's the scheme in a nutshell. Ne I think we've got Naomi with us. I don't know if Naomi... Hello? Are you there, yeah. Naomi? Oh, I'm yes, there you are. I'm looking right at you. Sorry, I was looking all yeah. around the screen and you're right below me. Um, so can you now... So I met Naomi on uh, Friday yeah. uh, for the first time and Naomi works for Wiltshire Council and I think she's going to give us a little um, tiny yeah. presentation about who she is, what she's been appointed to do and how she could help with our project. Is that okay, Naomi? Yes, that's right. I'm going to try and share the screen. Uh, a bit of a novice at this. Uh, hopefully this one will do the job. Okay, can you see that? Uh, the, the, the slideshow and from the beginning. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. yeah, lovely. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, there we go. So I'm a member of... Um, 
Wiltshire Council's brand new um, planting team. Um, we're, we're informally known as the Woodland Team. Um, the formerly is grant application and planting support. Um, basically, the council's got a grant for two years to fund three and a half officers in order to help to accelerate and promote and facilitate tree planting across the county. Um, there are three of us on board. Um, my colleague Terry, he's sort of responsible for the northern side of the county. My colleague Caroline in the middle, and I'm sort of from Warminster downwards. Uh, and um, so we're basically, the, we, as you can see, we've got huge climate targets in the country. And um, well, I'm sure you can read what it says there, uh, all about our, our targets for tree planting. And in Wiltshire itself, but no, um, your slides haven't moved on. We're still on the first page. Is that what you intended? That is not what I intended, and I don't know what to do about that. All right. Um, uh, okay, and I'm going backwards now. Um, uh, right. Whoa, ba, 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 ba. Um, I think if you touch. Uh, we're seeing an image of your screen. So if you touch number two on your on the left hand margin of your presentation, it should move to that slide, I think. Oh, OK, I'll try that bit. That's not what I've got. Hang on. I've got a uh, end show. OK, let's try this. Um, hmm. So that would, now? you can see it. Yeah. <clears throat> on the bottom, you know, you've got the three buttons there. Uh, to the left of the slider, the right hand one should sort of make it full screen if you tried clicking that. Well, this one, can you, what can you, what writing can you see now? Can you see UK's climate targets? Yeah, that's probably okay. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. That'll do you then. Okay. So as you can see, we've got huge targets in the county. In Wiltshire itself, um, well, the target, if we were to meet it, that would be the equivalent of planting. 435 hectares of woodland for the next 30 years. That's an area the size of devices each year. Now, um, Wiltshire is a particularly difficult county to plant on, even though it looks, as you can see in the picture, um, sort of a treeless with lots of opportunities for planting. It's it's more complicated than that because we've got lots of AONBs, areas of outstanding natural beauty. We've got lots of um, priority habitats, particularly chalk grassland historic sites, national park and so on, um, which mean that it's actually quite difficult to find places that are okay for planting. And those places, we've also got extremely good um, agricultural land, which is unsuitable for planting as well. So um, we, we need to plant sensitively to our landscape um, and we need to identify places to plant. Uh, if we move on, I'm these are some a uh, few slides of why to plant woodland, which I'm sure you're all very familiar with. Lots of benefits for the communities. And lots of benefits for the environment, biodiversity, reducing floods and storing carbon. And for farmers and landowners, there's good shade and diversity, generating carbon credits and so on. So we're trying to basically promote tree planting in all different types of environment, whether it's farms, parish land, private land, uh, schools, um, any, anywhere where, where we could promote tree planting from the smallest scale to the largest scale. <clears throat> so uh, this is our team. Um, we're there to provide support to schools, community groups, parish councils, farmers and landowners to promote to plant woodland trees and hedgerows. Now we don't have the funding to, to put the trees in your land. That's not how it's working. We are trying to identify good um, funds because there are a lot of grants available at the moment um, and to try to make, make it easier for your planting to take place, which might involve helping choose the right trees for the site, identifying funding, completing 
surveys and application forms where possible, giving um, the other departments within the council a bit of a shove to speed things along a bit, because I know that um, some things can be quite slow. So we're going to be trying to work on that as well. Giving advice on planting and linking people together to, um, to help make, make the project as good as possible. So where are we next? Uh, da, 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 da. Um, I'm just going to go to this one next. So the funding options that we have available, um, in particularly the um, Great Western Community Forest is a is a great fund. It provides a hundred percent funding uh, plus fifteen years worth of maintenance for your trees because we need to be really careful that we're not just putting trees in the ground that we're maintaining them for the years to come because you know they're going to live for hundreds of years. Now the Great Western Community Forest um, has a, a large pot of money. Um, and anywhere sort of north of Warminster, including Warminster, um, but not Salisbury Plain, is eligible for this funding. Um, if you are just south of that boundary, we might be able to be flexible if you've got a larger planting site, such as five hectares or more. Um, so uh, <clears throat> that, that is the most generous fund that we, we can work with. Um, Forestry England, uh, that's the Forestry Commission, has got the UCO grant. That's good for farmers um, and particularly other other large large areas of land. And they have have funds for woodland planning as well as um, uh, uh, as well as planting and and lots of costs to go with that. Um, tree Council, Woodland Trust, various other funds are available for tree planting. So we can help choose the right fund for your project um, if necessary and um, and help you with any of that. Another thing that we're working on is the tree warden scheme. Now tree warden scheme is, um, is part of the tree council and uh, it's sort of fizzled out over the years in Wiltshire, um, but we're rejuvenating it again within our woodland team at the council. Um, and it, the idea is to have a network of people around the county who love trees, who want to look out for the trees in their area. Um, and I'm sure many of you are suitable people for that. Uh, they might get involved in surveying the existing trees, checking they're healthy. If there are newly planted trees, uh, keeping an eye on them, making sure they're, they're um, watered and so on. Um, and helping to apply for funding and look for other new opportunities for tree trees within the area. What we'll be doing is, um, at the moment, we're collating interested people throughout the county, um, and um, then we'll be later on in the year, I think around September time, my colleague said today, um, we'll be starting some training with the Woodland Council um, and, uh, and uh, getting you all looking out for the trees in your area. So um, basically, that's more pretty much it from uh, me. So get in touch with us. I'll give you the email address in a minute. If you um, have a planting plan and you um, either you don't know where to start or you're looking for funding, you're looking for support, maybe you work at a school, business, another site, and there's potential for trees or you're a farm owner or a landowner and you want some advice about um, planting or um, grants, or if you want more advent information about being a tree warden. Um, what's that one there? Oh, here we go. This is the contact. Um, this is our contact that will get to our entire team. GAPS is grant application and planting support. So gaps at wiltshire.gov.uk. Also, if you don't mind, um, if you are doing some planting already and you've got it planned for this winter and you don't need our help, you're quite happy getting on with it. Um, we're, <clears throat> we're logging um, all the planting that's going on in the county in order to meet the government targets of tree planting. So if you would like, well, please, um, to get your tree counted towards Wiltshire's um, woodland cover, please let us know if you're doing some tree planting, let us know where it is and how many trees it is, either the number of trees or the hectareage, whichever is appropriate. Um, even if it's a little hedge, um, that would be great. Uh, it will make sure that um, 
we know what to what extent Wiltshire is meeting their targets. Uh, okay, so that's all from me. I'm happy to answer some questions if there are any. Other than that, I will uh, stop sharing. Oh, there's a hand raised, and uh, there we go. But I can't see who it is. Bill Jarvis, I think you raised your hand. Yes. Yes, no, I mean, th thanks. Really interesting stuff, and obviously covering a much wider area than we're trying to deal with with AOMs, but uh, useful to know that you're around. Um, and about time, too, I would say. A uh, um, couple of things, I guess. Um, is there is there a plot? Do Welsh Council have a have um have a map of Wiltshire that demonstrates where areas would be suitable for planting, or do we have to find those out for ourselves in, in entirety, or do you have any guidance on it? Uh, yeah, at the moment we're can you hear me? Yes, at the moment we're we're looking for people who sort of have land. Um, which might be parish land or privately owned land or land under the management of schools or or other enterprises. And uh, I mean, we're going out there trying to to show what we're doing um, so that people who have that land can um, can come forward and with it and and, uh, and do that. Yes. OK, but there is there is no map already in existence that says this would all be suitable land. Uh, not 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 as such no i mean okay. we know that we know that the areas of areas of outstanding natural beauty are tricky um mm -hmm. although it's, they can still be planted on to a, a small extent so you can sort of semi discount those for for large planting areas um along the the river corridors and that, you know the the road corridors obviously there's a lot of demand for um uh, for development as well so there's a obviously lots of people fighting over the the same land and uh very good farmland which again we've got a lot of um, anything that's grade one and two is not really suitable for tree planting either so we don't really have a map as such but we've got some guidelines as to what is and what isn't no, and okay. any type of land any type of land that should um sort of two hectares or more has to go undergo an environmental impact survey and we would be doing um, searches on that to to check that there's there's uh, not other habitats or soils that, that make it inappropriate in unsuitable for planting okay um so so there's lots of obviously things for us to do to make sure that our land is suitable etc and we can do that with you yes. um on your funding sources it, you gave sort of an indication on some of them what they were more likely to be serving like farmers or whatever Yes. Have you got have you got some sort of summary which wasn't on the slides that shows you know the best most likely the value that they might give etc cetera, etc cetera? or is yeah. that something else you need to tell us in about in more head, detail <laughs> in my head uh, I have um, I've been trying to to sort of work that out myself over the, the we've only been the and in existence for about two months so yes I've been going through the funding and and working those out it's better I would say to come to me with your scheme so that I can uh, okay. check the options um yeah. uh but yeah certainly anything anything um in the northern part of the county the um the trees for climate fund which is the great western community forest is is very generous okay one one more thing and then yep. i'll hand over to andrew um just a quick one the tree wardens presumably are voluntary not to pay posts. yes right. yeah okay yeah thank you Thank you very much, uh, Andrew N from Bradford. Yes, Andrew Nicholson. Thank you. A really useful presentation, Naomi. Thank you so much. Um, a, a bit more about funding. Uh, the team itself. How many of you, and and how how um, long term is the funding that actually keeps you all employed in Wiltshire? Where did it come from? Okay, the funding that's employing us is um, from. It's, it's two years funding and it's called the Woodland Creation Accelerator Fund. Um, and we're hoping that that we'll make ourselves so invaluable that they'll extend our contract beyond that. Um, so fingers crossed. Is that central government funding? Yes, it is. Yes, I, I think um, uh, about 80 councils across the country applied for it and 50 got it. Uh, something something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing better than active travel then. And uh, oh, 
as I say, the web page is really useful. You've got your email address on it. Um, I just want to comment that um, I've, I've seen some research in Scotland about tree planting and so on. Um, trees don't always have to go on onto the worst agricultural land, particularly if we experience a shift towards um, more plant-based diets. Um, there's a grade 3B, grade 3A agricultural land, and of course other agricultural land that will be freed up. And I can't see why some trees um, shouldn't go on 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 good land, um, if as long as we can still feed ourselves, of course, which I think we will be able to. That's yes, good. I think I mean that, that information came to me from the um, Forestry Commission when I was speaking to someone from there the other day, um, and I think anything that involves Forestry Commission is going to be very tough to get it. Um, through uh, onto a grade one or two land. Um, I, the, the first agroforestry show is uh, happening this September in Swindon, um, if anyone's interested in that, and that might be interesting to see to what extent um, uh, better farmland can also be used for agroforestry. So that's, that could be interesting. Thank you, is that everything? Can I move on to Les Lipscomb? Hi there. Yes, um, I was just uh, often wondered um, if there was, um, you know, sort of a group like yourselves might um, be able to think about um, the, the idea of advanced planting ahead of development. Um, you know, often, often, you know, to, well, usually, obviously, you know, planning uh, development gets approved and then plant, you know, a landscape scheme is approved alongside it. But actually, um, you know, um, you know, getting ahead of development with with good quality planting on the on the edges of settlements where um, landscape is important. Um, that, you know, I wonder if there's um, some work to be done in that area, possibly. Yes, yeah, certainly, it's something we've been talking about both within the council and um, with landowners themselves. Um, the, the, there's various sort of uh, constraints as to um, would the developer then have to um, do the uh, sort of the by by pay for the biodiversity twice, I suppose, because they'd be losing some of the land for the for the planting. But then they'd actually, when they develop on it, they'd have to plant some more, which for us who love the environment is no bad thing. Um, but I know. For, for the council, for example, on their land, they're a little bit hesitant to do that. Um, but it's certainly something we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And I've been talking about it with landowners who are um, hoping that they might be able to prevent the spread of, um, of development, specifically around um, Chippenham by doing some planting. Mm -hmm. um, but however, there's, there's no guarantee that just by planting a piece of land up with trees, then that that will stop development from happening um, but hopefully it will slow slow it down and we can create more difficulties for development well it'd be useful to have that um you know if if you if you can carve into new planting for development that's always a benefit you know when you see um you know uh, you know just spaces that are really not sufficient for much planting really mm -hmm. you know you do need to give a if, it, if it's going to be a priority which it surely should be now with this with the whole new issue about climate change etc cetera, etc cetera, and, and people like yourselves being employed to do a project like this then really it has you know we need to change the priorities don't we and get get trees in there first um and and then you know uh, everybody benefits even though maybe you have to lose some in the pro in the longer term process um others can be added elsewhere yes yes it's a discussion we've had recently to what extent it's it's okay to plant on some land which might be developed later maybe will maybe won't can we plant on it in the meantime some of us might say yes we'll plant some trees but then you can cut them down in 20 years in, in, or not uh anyway these these conversations are happening but more and more there is um uh it's necessary for any developers to um do the biodiversity net gain by ensuring that uh, there is biodiversity that they they are um we're investing into biodiversity uh, whenever they do a development that is that is becoming the rule now okay yeah well yes yeah thank you yeah uh, julian in swindon 
Cool. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I, I wasn't actually going to ask a question. I was just going to say, unfortunately, I could go in five minutes or so. And <clears throat> if you, I, I, I was asked to put a small uh, film clip together for the agenda. I haven't done that, but I have gathered a couple of resources which I could quickly talk to if that would help before I go. Otherwise, yeah. I'll hand over to uh, someone. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Julian, there were just a couple of uh, things in the chat, and I'm not quite sure that if, if that name has covered those already. One of them was, um, did you say, Enid asked, did, did you say there's a time limit for your support or help? And the other one was, what support if you're outside the Great Western Forest area? But I think that you're saying well, those other sources you listed apply. Yes, um, that's right. Uh, yes, initially our, our support is available for two years because that's when we know how long we will be in the post. Mm. Um, after that, at the moment, we don't know. Um, mm. Yes, outside the Great Western Community Forest, well, that the majority of my patch is the area below that. So I'm mm. looking into everything from Woodland Trust grants um, and UCO and all the other types of grants that are available um instead of that one so yeah there's there's yeah. lots of funds available okay thank you so much name i think everybody's well, found that really um interesting and useful thank you and uh and uh julian did you want to then crack on with your yes you all right thank you. um i'll just see if i can just the one um if i share the right thing or have you got lots of photos on the screen <laughs> I hate sharing the experience, to be honest. <laughs> no, we have the agenda, not pictures. Yeah, yeah okay, right. So what you got there is just our land use web page. Um, so um, that's where we're starting to put stuff. We'll put a link to um, the uh, resources for this project when we create a separate page. But um, uh, we, we've got the agenda and I've got a little list of resources on there. Um, the, the, the link to this page is in the uh, invitation to the email. Um, but, or you can browse to attend your Wiltshire Climate Alliance top level website, um, topic groups, land use topic group. So I was just going to quickly show you a couple of things which I'd come across when I was researching this. Um, one is the Hereford Tree Warden Network, which is, you know, a tree warden network like um, Naomi was describing. Um, she's just trying to resuscitate in Wiltshire. have uh, a really good website here. Um, They've got um, a great map as well, which shows all the parishes and who your local tree warden is, uh, so you can get hold of them. That's uh, sort of in, you know, something it would be lovely to do here. Um, so I'm just trying to position it so I can actually see what I'm sharing at the same time. Right. Um, they've also got um, a um, page, you know, that's their tree warden thing. Uh, no, sorry. They've also got a page on planting elms, which um, it doesn't seem to be uh, handy for me to show. But um, they they have a very good set of information about the species of elms. It's really annoying. Let me see if I can find this page because um, it's the one I really wanted to show you most. Um, just a sec. Mm. Okay, sorry, I'm not going to be able to find it quickly enough. Um, so the other things I was going to show you, I, th there's a um, leaflet which Claire's just been developing uh, with uh, Kate and others, I think, uh, which is here and uh, she can probably show you some more of. Um, there's also a video um, from Peter. Um, uh, this is Shelby. going to be the basis of the talk. Um, first run. Uh, and uh, the, the link to that is also in the notes. Um, it's a 40 minute video. It's sort of very interesting to watch for background, although probably not so much for specific tips for the project. Uh, Peter is, uh, I think, in the sort of business of uh, uh, sourcing and selling elm uh, disease risk and elm trees in South Yorkshire, which uh, is how he described himself in the video. 
Okay, so that that's the only, I, I just wanted to highlight all those things so you can look back at them really. Uh, so I'll pass back to Claire now. I'll stop sharing. Oh, thanks, Julian. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so moving on from that, um, our next um, item was feedback, but I wondered if we'd like to look at that, uh, the leaflet first, which um, Jane and Julie, Jane Cooksey and Julie and I have been working on over the weekend. So should we have a look at that now? Would that be a good? Yep. Want to do that? OK. So, Bill, have you got it to share or shall I? am I sharing it? I can put a link in the chat to it, but I better not share it myself because I was about to disappear. You're about to disappear, aren't yeah, you? I'll, yeah. I'll share the leaflet in. I'll, I'll put a link to the leaflet in the chat. Oh, OK. You can open, anyone can open it or you can share it if you want to. Um, I'm so that you should be able to just click on it and see the leaflet or okay. someone can open it and share it. Oops. If um, you want me, to, I've got it up if you want to share me to share my screen, Claire, I don't mind. Oh, that would be nice, Julie. Yes, thanks. Thanks very much because I, I brought it up and now I can't see anyone, <laughs> which isn't good. All right, I'm just getting it up. Um, And Bill, can I make you co-host uh, or host so that you can open the breakout rooms if you want to, or does anyone else want to be oh. co-host? Uh, yeah, yeah I, I can do it. I'm not, I'll, I'll probably mess it up, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not, el I'm not eligible to share anything, um, Bill, so could you... Oh, sorry, sorry, Julie, I'll, I'll, I'll sort that out. Um, Thanks. There we go. Okay. Uh... The building should be host now. Right, okay, so it should. Uh, is that sharing now? It says you've started. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. So, this, Claire and Jane, you've sort of come up with this concept. I just sort of Put it on a piece of paper for you and laid it out so if you want to talk it through i yep. know you've written it so it's probably better for you to yeah yeah um is it possible to um to make it a bit, i was going to say um, more, make it so you on. can see two pages at yeah. all um is that possible mm -hmm. technologically and it's difficult because it's going to be a trifold so that you fold it up. Yeah. Yeah. So it's laid out for printing, but I, I don't think I can actually. Um, oh, okay. I can show them flat. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't. Um, unless I make it smaller. Let's see if I can zoom it down a bit. Uh, maybe that's, that's nearly. No. Um, mm -hmm. anyway, that's, 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 yes, like, st stick where you are, Julia, that's fine. I'll start with that. And, I'm sorry, uh, I can't do. and then I'll tell you whether to go, when to go up to the top bit. Okay. Yeah, that work? At the yeah, sure. Bit. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Jane, um, Jane Cooksey, that is, do, do chip in when you want to. Um, because um, Jane and I have worked on this together and, and then uh, Julie has done the technological marvel of making it all appear as it does. So the idea is to start with that we would write a leaflet because the, uh, the idea is that we want to um, circulate. Uh, obviously, we also need to do a, a, web, a web page for, for people who just want to go to a, a web page. But to start with, uh, it's a trifold leaflet, which is why it's sort of, sort of all over the place. So the front page of the leaflet is Elms for All, planting and cherishing significant trees in our communities. And actually the hair streak, the um, um, hair streak but butterfly is the back page with the way it, it folds up. Um, so the focus of the project is to um, uh, create that link um, with the Elms and history and the future. Um, so we've got various um, topics there. 
uh, at the end, we've got why we care about elms. And then in that bit, um, almost some of the stories which you've told us this evening, various people would be appropriate for that. Um, and then you see, we've got the sad story of what of what the elms had ha happened to the elms briefly in the 19. Uh, 20s, 1920s and 1970s, I think it is, but very badly in the 1970s, and then hope for the future. So those parts of the leaflet or the um, immaterial are not yet complete. Um, and um, then we've got the what you might expect, which is how to get involved if if you're looking at the towards the top right of the uh, of the leaflet. Julie, could you take it down a bit uh, so that we can yeah. see the top? Can you do that? For me that's that thank is you. done yeah thank you um so that might be quite difficult for you to to see um but we've got a a list of what we would offer um to people who want to become involved with us um uh, um dealing with the project um uh which is and i can't read it myself <laughs> which is a bit of a problem um can you make it a bit bigger just, again yeah, and, then, and bring it down? I'm in or, trouble. Um, hang on, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll minimise and go to my own copy of it and then I can talk to, talk about it a bit more sensibly. I think uh, it needs to be big enough to be able to read it if you do that, Julie. Yeah, it does, it does, I know. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's... It's yeah. like people to give us feedback or any comments or ideas. Yes, um, yeah, exactly. Um, we right, can, that's it. That's perfect. That's perfect. I hope everybody can read that. Can they? Oh, that, that's looking good for me. Thank you. OK. So the project uh, provisionally is called Elms for All. We might come up with a better title for it. Um, preserving Nature for Our Children. Um, so we've got a, a paragraph about imagine that your uh, child or grandchild um, can go and visit a tree that they've planted or been part of planting in a green corridor of a uh, new green corridor of woodland. Um, then we've got a, an, uh, a paragraph about the new baseline that we want to create, a baseline uh, where we can um, have the right or the opportunity to um, experience plants and animals around us. Uh, we're in collaboration with Wiltshire Tree Council. I think that's with Wiltshire Council. We need to just correct the an error there. Um, our goal is to encourage local groups and communities to plant elms or other iconic species and look after the trees as they grow, help them source the elms and plan where to plant, use the Wiltshire Climate Alliance Network to celebrate and publicise what's been achieved, uh, providing materials and practical support. So that's quite an important part of the project uh, to make sure that um, the what people do is celebrated and noted and known about in local communities because that's um, an important part of of making the all the groups in Wiltshire uh, more visible, more publicly visible to the outside world. So raising the profile of local groups, um, we've got access to expert advice. We've just had some. Sources of trees. Now, um, one of the, the link that uh, Peter uh, was talking about just now was to, um, uh, that uh, Julian was talking about just now was to Peter Shelbourne, who is sourcing some trees. Other, tr uh, He wouldn't, I don't think, be able to, to supply um, a sufficient number of trees if uh, loads of people wanted elms. I don't know what his supply level is, so that's something we need to investigate further as to the level of uh, supply that we can have. Um, and we also need to um, provide uh, more detailed material about the technical uh, side of elms, because there's all sorts of different elms, there's all sorts of different varieties and subspecies and all the rest of it. So. Um, that needs to be um, clarified for people uh, because some elms are not going to provide that iconic elm shape that we've got on the leaflet. They might be a witch elm that's a different shape or um, some other um, variety or hybrid. Um, but information about funding, um, information about where, when and how to plant in your local area and similar to other things that Wiltshire Climate Alliance does, um, 
uh, the ability to link up with other people who've um, done this before in their um, local area and are willing to give help and advice. Because I think, as I mentioned at the beginning, lots of people are planting elm trees, but do we know who they who they are and what their experience has been? Did the trees survive? Are they thriving? What, what were the problems? So that is something that we can uh, coordinate, I think. Um, we've got a section on why plant trees, um, and uh, that's an expansion of the list which um, Naomi gave us, really. Um, and um, beauty, pleasure, um, experience of wildlife are, are high on the priorities for this scheme. And then we've got how to get involved. So that's what we've done so far. Um, has anybody got any questions about the leaflet or the contents or what's going to go in it? If this is going to be sent out to um, the local groups, to parish councils, uh, to people who might be interested in taking part in this and having an elm that they can they can uh, go and see and tend or look after. Julie? I have a question. Yeah, so, so obviously I'm quite sensitive about printing stuff especially on mm. paper mm. because we're trying to preserve trees and um i think it would be important for us to create a version of this that is uh, this format so that you know we can just read it in in a in a flat format probably obviously we'll have the web page as well I'll send people to but it would be good to make a poster i think as well yeah. as this um mm -hmm. a thought anyway yeah yeah to, and to, to try and get as much of this out digitally as possible would be what I would like to try and do. But um, I realise we can't always um, reach everyone that way. No, I think uh, my thought was that we, we would be contacting people digitally. Um, some of the groups um, that I know about, that they, they exist uh, via Facebook pages. They don't have a website or something. They're just a Facebook group. I mean, mm -hmm. not just, but yeah. they are a Facebook group. Um, so it would be about messaging those groups by whatever means that they are actually using themselves, which is going to them in their own terms, I guess. Um, yeah. If you're a sure. sort of dinosaur like me, I was <laughs> walking around with a sheaf of piece of paper in my pocket or accumulating leaflets in my pocket. But I mean, I'm just a dinosaur. So most, most people don't want to do that, do they? They want links to website but this was about writing it and then we can rejig it for a page i think or pages yeah no how it comes involved so you got les and andrew wanting to talk to you oh right oh we've probably been nick um nick anyway. whoops i can't see anybody wanting to talk yeah i've got it on my... oh les les Yes, Nicola, do you want to say something? Yeah, sorry, I'm. I was just muted there. Um, I want. Uh, yes, a couple of things actually. I think it's really. Yeah, it's a great idea to have a leaflet. It looks really good. Um, the thing I was, struck me was initially um, was was you know why elms, <laughs> um, because you know I, I think there's a, there's a history, isn't there, in Wiltshire? You know, and, and especially you know in, in well, I know North Wiltshire, particularly the elms were important. Were very Part, very much part of the landscape, but they were locally here too. Um, and there was nothing about sort of Dutch elm beetle and the, the sort of history of it. I think one perhaps would need to give a little bit of background. Yes, I, um, if, if you're looking at the screen, Nicola, the, yes. the, the, that's what's supposed to be in the sad story. We haven't had time to do the oh, sad story yet. Oh, that's okay. That the sad story is going to be about what's happened and the disease and and why we are why we can't yeah. see them now so the, the importance of them is that in, in the landscape in wiltshire you know i think that has that wiltshire sort of thing really and um yes okay yeah and that and, well the importance of the landscape would be why we care about elms and the scale and, and you're set you're saying we particularly care about them in wiltshire because well, of their yeah. importance in our landscape yeah in, which is a really good point isn't it historically and the, as the, there are a, they are a sort of a tree of significant scale, which, you know, there aren't many trees, um, you know, native trees are mm. there, but, um, you know, we have left now yes. that are in this, that type of scale. So they're a major landscape feature and also for biodiversity reasons, obviously, you know, they do make a major, well, would make a major contribution. And that, and I think it is important to, to, to highlight that research work that's going on, you know, because I think 
Peter Shelgrass. He's a local fam, uh, farmer, isn't he, in fact? Yes. Yes, he is. Yes. So, um, you know, it would be good to have that as well. Yes. So, the, I mean, there's, it's very much a, a work in progress. So we wanted to put something together and then, you know, for people yes. to, to see, you know, to see how people respond to it. No, just um, some thoughts, just some thoughts anyway. No, I th <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I mean, I got a bit sort of diverted because I started looking at um, Richard Maybe, uh, Flora Botanica, which is full of wacky things that people did with elms. And Jane and I <laughs> also enjoyed those things. But <laughs> what you've said is probably more... Um, relevant and dignified well you know uh, maybe you i mean you might have uh, something which is fun as well you know you yeah, have, yeah. Have, a, have a variety of things there just Cla claire can i suggest yeah. that if people have thoughts on your on your leaflet mm. that they email contact at wheelchair because we could we could have the rest of the evening talking about the detail of what we've got on there if we're not careful Okay, um, that's a very but, good But suggestion. I think there are people who want to comment on it. So Andrew, Kate and uh, Jane want to say something, so. All right. Um, yes, am I unmuted? Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah. you're fine. Good. Um, this is great. And to me, it's very, very nice. There are lots of nice reasons for doing this. And there are a few important reasons for doing this. For Wiltshire Climate Alliance has a, as a climate umbrella group and of course one is capturing um carbon in these huge and magnificent trees another is i hope that we um get into liaison with the large number of parish councils um across wiltshire and i um actually went to a, a wiltshire council website and found um a list of all the parishes and i've put it onto a document that i've put in to the chat just now Mm. on one sheet you can see that all those 233 parishes and 19 or 20 town councils some of the parish councils are called parish meetings so to me that's important mm. not just so that we can put an elm um offer an elm into every parish um but also so that we can then work with them on green and blue infrastructure um corridors mm. active travel corridors and generally um try to um, make contact with parish councils uh, as the climate emergency focused entity that we are as Wiltshire Climate Alliance. Mm. Um, so that's a second one of the important reasons. Um, and well, I think I mentioned wildlife corridors and, and further development. That would be a, a third one, generally engaging with them on, on land use. Um, I, I want to put one other link into the, uh, into the chat, which is about the um, trees planted by the Duc de Sully in um, uh, a, a, an earlier century, Bradford Avon is twinned with Sully Sulois, and um, right. we've got an, a member who's done a load of research on trees planted by the Duke de Sully in um, whenever it was <laughs> um, to celebrate the liberation of the of the Protestants or something. But he was the one who put planted poplar trees along the long straight roads of France. Um, and he was um, the one who first uh, did that. And he also um, planted a tree, which was a feature tree in every village or in hundreds of villages, two, three, four hundred have been discovered by our Bradford and Avon researcher. And the French never knew that there were so many villages with a Sully tree. So I'd like these trees particularly to go in key green spaces within our villages, like on the common or on the green um wherever possible or in a community space and to have the name of water climate alliance associated with those trees on a plaque mm -hmm. just as the duke de sully's name was associated mm -hmm. with the many trees that he um generously planted they were elms largely because elm was used for gun carriages partly but they are of course brilliant magnificent and long-lived trees um and we won't be chopping them down to make gun carriages um for as long as um civilization lasts the way we have it at the moment so i hope that's helpful the list of parishes and do read that page i put in the chat about the sully trees thank you thanks andrew that sounds fantastic i mean that's the uh link to people's memories and um the history of it which is it's more like a telephone line isn't it to to draw all these things together to talk uh, talk about trees talk about green corridors and all the rest of it so yeah 
Who's uh, next? Kate, Kate? Kate, Kate Free, Freeman and then Jane. Oops. Right, I hope I'm, I, I'm audible now, am I? Um, I just wanted to add, actually, to a lot of what um, Andrew has very usefully said. I think uh, it's taking the parish idea a little bit further. The elm is very much a feature of the landscape because it was in hedgerows and it is very much a hedgerow tree. And we've also got the threat of losing a lot of our ash trees because of ash dieback, which I just feel it's yeah, one other. Each generation seems to be having its devastation. Mm -hmm. So I think um, restoring the idea of having them in our hedgerows would, for me, be absolutely vital. There's a historic piece of work that probably needs to be done. I've already had a go with the uh, historic England to try and track some historic photographs of elms in the hedgerows. And, but in order to do that, one would need to work very closely with farmers because of course the hedge is surrounding their fields. And that brings us back to Wiltshire Council and incentivizing the, the farmers to do precisely that. So for instance, where we live uh, in, in uh, Pusey Vale, there's the Pusey Downs Farmers Group and there are farmer groups all over Wiltshire. And the guy who was leading that is called Simon Smart. Uh, and he also grows elms, I gather, or he said he had a source. So I don't know whether it's the same source. And I've been wondering how to get hold of him. I've no idea, but I just happen to have that little bit of information. But it would be terrific if we could encourage the parishes to work with farmers to encourage them for historic and landscape reasons to send the message about the significance of the tree, because I think it's a billboard, <laughs> just as uh, Andrew was saying, you know, a bit for mm. world climate change. Um, so I think uh, if we could possibly uh, combine uh, and encourage uh, uh, parishes to work with farmers on doing hedgerow planting, I, I do feel that there would be great promise uh, in, in that, uh, but that would need quite a lot of support and maybe the Wildlife Trust could help with that as well. Okay. Thank you. I mean, that is um, just true, isn't it? Elms used to be everywhere along the hedgerows and... Uh, um, Claire, one of the things that's just been brought up there is the fact is what we're going to be talking about in the breakout groups is to how to get the message out there mm. and what mm. people's ideas are. And that was a really good idea. Yeah. Um, but okay. let's take it a bit further. Jane wants okay. to talk. Jane Cooksey wants to talk. I Jane. love what Andrew and Kate were saying. I was going to say some of what they were saying. Just three points I want to add to that. One is I don't believe we're ever going to solve climate change unless we solve human beings communicating with care and sacred and meaning and all the rest of it. And I see this tree project as being a way of getting into that and bringing together communication with communities and people actually caring for the environment and realizing it's important. So it sort of underlies what Andrew was saying. I also mm. want to talk about the art and science. There's some fantastic art. I see it's in the chat there. There's a mm. wonderful painting of a year on some sort of green somewhere in Westbury that somebody did in the 20s or the 30s. I found this afternoon, and of course there is the constable picture of uh, Salisbury Cathedral across the meadows, and I'm pretty certain one or two of the trees of that it are elms, and I think it would be a useful mm. thing that I want to do, and I started doing this, finding some art that we could put on the website saying, this is what we're missing, and this is what we're trying to help reduce. Mm. And the other thing is I also started looking at the science of this, both hybridization and inoculation, and I started doing some research on and I want to put something together that we can put into the website with links to what's worth reading or what's, you know, what, mm. what, what can be found. I don't want to talk much of the, the limited breakout with something I'm a bit tired of now, I think, soon. So that's me for the moment. Oh, thank okay. you, Jane. Thank you very much. Um, I could certainly agree about the artwork. I think uh, it'd be great on the website to 
have all these um, amazing pieces of art. There's just loads of them that mean a lot to people. So are we going to go into breakout now, Bill? Are you going to organize that? Yeah, I that? think just... I don't just think be... anybody else is wanting to say anything. No, no one has got a hand up. Uh, oh, only that I, I can I give my apologies. I'm sorry. I, various things have come into my home and I've got to respond to them. But okay. I, I'm very grateful for the information I've received today. Thank you. OK, okay. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Mm. Uh, the same with me, I'm afraid, but a very interesting. Uh, uh, sorry, the same with me. It's very interesting uh, uh, evening listening to this and uh, having been an art teacher. I certainly get back to my art with the trees. <laughs> thank you very much indeed, Jane, for telling me that. Hi, and thank you, everyone. Okay. Um, so what we're going to talk about now in our breakouts, just 15 minutes, is, is just an, uh, get an idea out of that breakout group of how we can spread the word about Elms and, and uh, Claire's excellent stuff which will enable us to get more and more elms planted in the in the county and and just using those ideas we've already heard about but expanding on them and working out how as a group we can we can mobilize all of that we just need 15 minutes of chat in the in the breakouts to see how we're going to be, be doing that and i'm just gonna just going to recreate the thing because we've lost a few people so there'll be four people and three people in each. So I will open the rooms now, I think. Hang on. Yeah. And we'll come back in 15 minutes. See you in a bit. Short report back then. Yeah. He's galvanized. He writes, um, he's a green surveyor, building expert, that sort of thing. He writes a series of opinion pieces, very green for his area newsletter, which is a lot of parishes up the Bybrook Valley. And um, he, uh, we had a conversation where he talked about the key uh, resurgence, the idea that you don't fall flat on your back with the death of the ash trees you bring things back planting elms it really seems to excite him um as well as hedgerow trees and he's uh, castle coombe has a lot of farmers and so on he also feels that this idea of iconic trees in the center of each community is 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 important he um takes it as a challenge he thinks this is an exquisitely designed challenge and um he asked whether we are likely to partner with the wild wiltshire wildlife trust on uh, this um, whole initiative, and I said quite possibly. Um, and I also the couple of things I put in that chat. Um, one was the link to the green and blue infrastructure strategy that Wiltshire mm -hmm. has. So that was the it's feedback. I just spent that. the time in, in interviewing him because Julian was the third member of the breakout, and he was not really there. And I've got to go in five minutes as well. Thanks. So, so Claire, we've got to be able to pull all these bits together from our breakout groups at some in some way. <laughs> so, I'm willing to do that. Oh, still okay, Jane? so you're willing willing to do that. I mean, so I can't hear you very well, Jane. Are you? Yes, yeah, sorry, my, my my PC is getting a bit old. I'm willing to put this together. I wasn't. I was writing down frantically from Andrew. How many groups was there? What what was the third group? Yeah. Who was it? Uh, Nicola, were you in a different group? Oh, no, I had Nicola and and um, Les and Enid. Who had okay. the other one? You, Claire. Oh, so, yeah. Claire, me, and Naomi were in with Kate in Kate, a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you some feedback from your group, and I'll tell, then I'll tell you what we, we came and I'll make notes for this yeah. together. I think there were three, three or four things. What one was that um, elm planting in hedgerows was a really good idea, and there should be an engagement with farmers and others to find out how how that could be done. Uh, and parish councils are perhaps a good way to go forward in terms of talking to farmers. 
but it may be another way of doing it. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second was um, engagement with power, with our own groups. So how do we engage with our own groups? And Claire made the very valid point that we need our act together before we start launching things. So we need to make sure we've got all the all our things ready to go. But parish councils take months to book a meeting, so we need to start thinking about how we get the hold of parish councils. So WCA will do the groups, and somebody else is going to have to do the parishes. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Um, so how do we do that? Didn't finish that conversation off. Although we did talk briefly about area boards and the fact that there are 18 area boards, all managing the 234 parishes we've got. So approaching the area boards was also a thought about how we could launch this thing out into the public. Was that it, guys? Did I? I think that out? was that was about it. Yes, the practicalities of getting back to people. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Shall I just quickly report what I think we were talking about? Um, Julie was talking about um, at least having a project and being ready to go, and, and that uh, we need to break this community event. Um, Enid's team, team to start publishing and getting together people in her area of Lavington, possibly. Um, and uh, Nicola and um, Les were talking about sort of the green space um, and the difficulties of sort of because it's such a big area and how many different projects are going on. But that Elms really must feature as an iconic thing. And um, that uh, the neighbourhood plan, it's an important thing to look at that and say, well, what's happening in the civic society when they look at planning applications. So uh, it all has to coordinate somehow with the green blue infrastructure process, which we obviously need to do a bit more research on. You, you can, uh, just, um, just a quick one on that, Jane, you can actually allocate land for forestry in your neighbourhood plan as long as you have the landowner's permission. So it can be allocated and therefore it takes the building bits out, but it needs to be in the neighbourhood plan, so it's no good at doing it. So we'd be ad hoc plan beforehand. Yeah, so that's time thing. Um, we we looked at the complexity of so many parishes in Salisbury very briefly, and um, possibly doing something with the green chapter. So, um, but then we went on to the topic of elms needing clay soils and whether we actually got to be very careful. And Naomi's gone, won't she? But she would help us on that to make sure that we're not planting some elms where they wouldn't work but the obvious mm. thing of Salisbury is the water meadows possibly and the cathedral close and those areas where it is more like the sort of clay soils or loam soils than the mm. chalk that wouldn't work so mm. I think that covers what we were talking about mm. and um, we were talking about getting a, I was talking about getting a think tank together because um, uh, Salisbury is a big project where I'm out of Salisbury but I'm in Pitten, so I would like to come into the sort of group as well and get together with Nikki and Claire and um, Lowe's at some point and the wider concept to get something, looking at something more complex about the sort of group. Okay. So I'll put those notes together and where do I send them, Bill? Claire, where do you want them, these notes? Um, send them to Claire. <laughs> send them to me, send, send them to, to me and I'll, they'll end up in the right place, yeah. Yeah, great. Good. Okay. Um, so, anybody else got anything to say about next steps? Oh, Andrew, sorry, you had your hand up. Sorry, by the way, you're muted. Did I did, did I say that Mike is is willing to engage his parish council and that he does this newsletter for quite a group of parishes? He's really on board. Um, there's one point I I put in the chat just before just before the breakouts, which you might have blinked and missed it which is normally, I agree with Julie Strawson, that digital is good, printing onto dead trees is, is not so good, but in the special case of parish councils, where the clerk and the chair are so very part-time, I think we might be able to justify um, posting things out. Possibly we could get Wiltshire to do the posting or pay for the postage or something on recycled paper, of course, because uh, it, that might be the only way to make it register with the parish council Clark. Send it, send it yeah. to the clerk, and the clerk usually issues it to the parish councillors. Okay. Have, yeah. have uh, Mike, I see Mike wanted to have some input into the leaflet. Has he... Um... I encouraged him to um, 
to I, I don't have his email so I encourage him to give that input I think Watch Climate Alliance might have him because he receives emails okay he might be a parish council member for Castle Coombe so it's possible probably possible to reach him one way or another okay and he's not retired he's a working chartered surveyor so his name is and a contact details are probably in the public domain in case that okay. helps Thanks. Well, I, I see there's a question from Enid about whether Mike Mark Roberts can help supply something for our parish councils if we uh, start talking to them, anyone, any one of us. So perhaps it's something to ask Mark. I, I didn't know if that's what you meant or not. That's all Sorry, I've got to go. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is brilliant. Okay, Andrew. Okay, Andrew. Nice speak to soon. When, when's our steering I, group? I've got all the links. I've downloaded all the links. Oh, before, before everybody goes. Oh, yeah. We're not going yet. Go We're on. not going yet. Sorry. I wanted to say what a huge success this feels like. And well done you for getting this project off the ground. Oh, well, I don't know. I thought it was Bill's project. <laughs> no, it wasn't my project. It's your project. That he, uh, that he made me do. <laughs> yeah. I, but what I... Sorry, I, well done, I'm, I'm, I'm panicking now about August meeting, going on to any other business. Just, we can go back to next steps. But before everybody disappears, are we going to have an August meeting? I want to ask everybody. I should have asked everybody at the beginning, I think. Are we having an August meeting or not? Because I need to do something about that tomorrow. On just this? No, no, no. Just a, reg uh, uh, just a, a regular, regular monthly one. meeting. Okay. Are we going to have a meeting in August or not? I need to... We need to have a decision as to whether we are or not. What do you think, Bill? As, Jane? as we're so busy on the project, I think we should keep to the project. And if we have a meeting, it should be about the project. Okay, so not with a separate speaker. It's, it's the speaker issue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, because I think, I've got that. I've got I that green. There's green lots of things later. going on, and, and I think we, if we have a summary at the next meeting of where we've got to, right. Uh, the only thing I think we've missed this evening is how many people are actually helping us now. Mm. Because clearly Jane is, and Mike Roberts has volunteered, and mm. you know, so so Naomi's gone for mm. her tea, and I've just lost mine. She's always taken away. Um, okay, <laughs> yeah, I, I I'd rather it. I'd rather do it the other way around, which is I think just to, to to say what the tasks are, and then ask people to do them. To be honest, yeah. and then yeah, people yeah, but want you to need do people that. to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we've I've got a list of everybody who's come this evening, so okay, as long as I can access who the who can. All right, so it will be to you to drop out a note that, to everybody about what what needs to be done. Yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah. and i and i have to go now as well okay <laughs> it's Thanks been a everybody. brilliant meeting thank you very much everybody it's excellent thank I'll you see. thank you jane and everybody who's helped bye thank bye. you and thank you naomi for coming thanks our oh, new friend naomi <laughs> just got back so it doesn't matter hi oh oh um i was able to rejoin because i'm was uh, my wife told me i've missed the first sitting <laughs> Oh dear. That's fine. What an energetic meeting. Brilliant. Yes, it was rather. Mm. We really okay. started something. We really so. jacked everybody up and it's going to actually, I can feel it spinning off. It's going to jack up some of mm. the, the green. Yes, but we we have got to keep it in mind what we're actually doing yeah. because there's so many, we've you know, what stay, is it? We've got to try and stay focused. Yes, we? yes. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing, I, I think we need to talk to Julie about the um, the comm side of it. I think that's quite important for for small groups um, as as to what they're going to get out of it at the end. I'm quite focused on the end in my thoughts. You know, this is going to because if there's six of you or five of you and you want more people to to join you, that's going to be the bit that helps with that, isn't it? Well, one of one of the things I didn't say because Andrew said so much was at my concept of what do I call it? I don't know what was that. I call it something like rent a mob of plant tree planters. Mm. We need to put out together people who will dive bomb maybe into another parish to get the tree planting off the ground. Oh I see. That's a good idea. Isn't it? Rent a mob. Yeah. Yeah. Rent a yeah. mob. Yeah. Young strong women and men who have some technical knowledge. Anyway, mm. Andrew's now I must go. Yeah. Thank you, Claire. Well done. Andrew's cloned himself into two. I don't know how he's done that, but if I go, maybe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>